So I've been having a read through some of the comments on last week's video and it looks like a lot of um, you guys are sort of pro me scaling the production of these videos back a little bit. How long have I been telling you this for? Who the fuck are you? I'm part of your internal monologue, Steph. Oh, okay, makes sense. You're just a bit too basic to make anything profound. And when you try to, it just looks like you're trying too much and it just all ends up looking a bit embarrassing. Don't listen to him. Create the content you want to create. Who are you? He's the pretentious part of your internal monologue. He's the one that wants you to keep making this meaningful content so you can carry on alienating your viewers so there's nobody left watching other than your mum who just pity watches and skips all the parts where you're in it just to get to Hannah and the kids. And he's the part of your internal monologue that would rather you make dumbed down content devoid of all opinion and conjecture in order to attract a wider audience because deep down he thinks that that will help with his low self-esteem issues. I'm just giving him the advice he needs, not the advice that he wants. You just need to stop trying to be something that you're not and create content that people want. You know what else most people want, Steph? This Robbie Williams song. I love my life. I am powerful. It's a great catchy song and how many views does it have now? What, 13 million? You dream of those sort of numbers. Numbers mean nothing, Steph, you know that. There were eight million registered Nazis. What, should we all become a Nazi now? How can you say Robbie Williams fans are the same as Nazis? Well, the Nazis dress better. Am I right? <laughs> that was nice. Oh, I love how edgy and controversial you two are. Listen, just because you don't like something doesn't make you above that thing. I'll tell you what, carry on making the content that nobody can connect with and keep dropping subs and views and get to the point where you have to get a normal job, but a shit one because you've got no decent qualifications and I'll say those four words that I always say to you, I told you so. I think you might have a point. The direction I'm taking doesn't seem to be working for most people, so maybe I should scale back and make what people want. <sighs> you could listen to us argue about this all day, Steph, but the fact of the matter is, the content should never come from here. It should always come from here. Eh! Yeah. Did he just say, you actually, you actually just said that? That's disgusting. Listen, this is the reason why you've got all these problems, is because you're listening to that twat too much. You know, I hate you and everything you stand for. Yeah, you know, I feel exactly the same. Okay, thanks, internal monologues, uh, for your input. I'll, uh, I'll take it from here. Hey. I'm gonna go on a cowboy run. Okay, I love you. I'll see you in a sec. Anything else? You're really thinking about that, aren't you? Yeah. Dinner? Like a, um, yeah, could you get some chicken? I know it's making medley. We've got rice, don't we? We've got a little bit, maybe get some more. Should chicken and rice. some sweet corn to go in the medley? Yeah, sure, if you want sweet corn in the medley. We've got onion. We've got, um, yeah, I'll just make a medley. Chicken and sweet corn. Yeah, and maybe like, I can have a whisper or something. Sure. Thanks. Grayson is still poorly. I'm pretty sure it's the flu because he's had like a raging temperature that has been on and off. So I think that's what it is. He just can't really move from the sofa, bless him. He's so sick. Do you want a drink, Papa? <laughs> it's really hard seeing him like this because it's just not like, it's not him. Normally he's like all like, a little character, a little terror, and he's just been so um, docile and uh, subdued for so long. I kind of miss him. He hasn't asked me for a fight in about five days. I'm normally sitting at my desk doing some work and he's like, Daddy, can we have a fight? And then we, uh, I can never say no, man. I can never say no, it's so cute. So we always go into the living room and have a big fight. So I've missed having fights with him. I don't actual fight him. It's not a full on, like, you know, it's not like a MMA. It's just a play fight. In case anyone's getting worried. So I've made him his favourite honey sandwich, even though I know he's probably not going to touch it. Here you go, Gracie. There you are. Oh dear. You are hungry, aren't you? Rufus, don't. That's Grayson's. Yeah. Rufus was jealous of Grayson's lunch, so I'm gonna give him his lunch now too. I really like the age that he's at now. He's kind of like, I would describe it is like having like a little mini E.T. <laughs> Just walking around your house and like trashing the place. <laughs> That's mummy's oven glove. You dancing? Nope. <laughs> okay then.
I don't often say this, but I was, I was really proud of how that scene turned out at the start of this week's video, where my internal monologues were having this raging argument about what type of content I should create. I feel like it's the same with any kind of creative discipline, um, any kind of like music or film or, or art or poetry or any, any kind of creative discipline you can think of. I feel where it resonates the most is when it shows some sense of vulnerability because I think that in vulnerability you can see honesty and I think in honesty you can see uh, intimacy and that scene at the start of this week's video was honest because that's how I feel most of my waking hours I have that internal monologue argument constantly it is nap time for this little grump <laughs> so I'm just gonna put him down and then I'm going to get Gracie some cereal because he's finally decided that he does want to eat something and then oh, I might treat myself to a middle of the day bath. Should be working, but I feel like I need a little bit more time to myself to just recuperate before I have to do this all again. Sophie, where's your head? Oh dear. I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like I'm standing on a ship that's slowly sinking. I've been feeling like that for some time now, and it's it's not a nice place to be. And I know it's it's a feeling that other creators feel as well and I know that a lot of us don't want to talk about it because if we talk about it a it makes it real and then b it may feel like you're going to sink your ship even faster because then what makes this sustainable um, brands who who work with you may be like well I'm not working with them their ship sinking so nobody really wants to talk about it and nobody likes to talk about it but fuck it it's kind of forced me to ask myself a question what comes next I don't think I'm gonna make it to the bath because I'm gonna prepare for the afternoon. I've got basket of toys from upstairs and I think I'm gonna switch all the toys around so Rufus is happy um, because the ones upstairs they don't really play with because we kind of just use this room to play in. So I'm swapping the toys around um, and I'm gonna empty the laundry basket and get that all put away um, and also sit with Gracie for a bit because look how sad he looks. You okay, Gracie? Oh, chicken. You need some medicine, don't you? For the past few months now, I've been working on something quietly in the background. I've been working with two extremely talented uh, creators uh, slash producers, one, uh, one guy called Adam and one guy called Simon. We're working on creating a pilot, a pilot which once finished, we will then take to either Netflix or Amazon. And depending on which one of those uh, companies are more pioneering, will hopefully commission us to make a series for them. I've wanted to kind of step in a new direction for some time now and try and just, just go somewhere completely unfamiliar, but I never had the idea. And I had this idea come to me a while back and it, from, I know I would say this, but I just feel it's such a strong idea that I'm so enthused about it that I can't wait to sort of get this pilot up and running so we can kind of show them because I really feel strongly that it could work. It's, it's a very interesting format that we're presenting. Something that I don't think I've ever seen done before. I suppose in a way, the sinking ship feeling is kind of probably something I needed to feel in order to kind of get the motivation to actually step in the new direction. Um, it's not gonna happen for some time. It's just the case at the moment of kind of nailing the, a really strong pilot, which conveys this quite audacious idea to them to see if they can get on board with it, which I, I truly believe they will once they hear it. But, uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd let you know how I'm feeling about everything and what I'm quietly working on. I'll keep you posted on how it goes anyway. Um, but yeah, I've got the gang coming downstairs now, so I've got to rush. But uh, yeah, anyway, sorry if that was melodramatic. But I think it ends well. <laughs> anyway, I hear screaming. I better go. Rufus to the park but he's having such a great time with this um broom and mop <laughs> set I don't want to tear him away from that Rue and I are just going for a little walk to the park in the buggy just to get some fresh air and get out the house. 
have a look at the birds, see if we can see any dogs, do a loop around the park and then come home. That is domestic abuse, and I can easily file for that. That's disgusting. Yeah, Grayson's picked him, picked up a little bit. You see him there in the background, um, <laughs> dropping a broom on his brother's head. Oh, Ruth! No, he didn't. Ruth just fell backwards and hit the head on the table. Oh God! It's gonna be, it's gonna be a big one. Hold your ears, guys. Time, it's booby time. You feeling a bit better? A bit. Oh, good. Oh, good. We've missed you. Do you want to go back to school? No. Why do you not want to go to school? I always. You always what? Go to school. Yeah, but that's how life works, man. You go to school and no. then you get a job. You're basically in the system for the rest you're of your in life, the system, mate. Until, you're, until you retire now. Yep, the system's going to chew you up, mate. <laughs> Who's this? Piggy? You <laughs> 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 make the best animal noises. What are you looking at my belly for? <laughs> it is too fat. Can you give a kiss? <laughs> oh, Ruthie can. Watch this. <laughs> Grayson, do you like it when, like, when Daddy gives Mummy kisses? No. Why? It's horrible. Why is it horrible? Because it's disgusting. Oh no, the brute. Here comes the brute. <laughs> oh God. It's good to have you back, Grace. I think we're getting our little boy back, aren't we? Hopefully. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing this to me? I just need to leave the house. I am now on step seven of 21 on my retainers. These plastic things over my teeth. A lot of people said it would take like one or two days to kind of get used to it. I'm like a third of the way in and I still hate them with a searing, overwhelming passion. I had a brace when I was in my early 20s and uh, weirdly, um, when I was single with my brace, it did it didn't, put it this way, it didn't work against me. It worked for me when it came to um, dating ladies. And I think that's because I had to compensate with my personality. Uh, but then when they came off, nothing. I was, uh, it was barren, dark times. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day that I'd no longer look as horsey as I do right now. <laughs> Next thing I've got to get my chin filed down a little bit and then uh, maybe a little bit, a bit, of it, a bit of surgery on the eyes, sort of slanting down just so I can keep looking uh, youthful and relevant. Anyway, on with the show. Got some Play-Doh entertainment going on here. While he is entertained, I'm gonna make some soup. I kind of adapted it from a recipe that I used to make for Rufus when I made puree for him. Basically, you just add more stock. Um, but it's sweet potato, lentil, carrot, and onion. So I'm just gonna make that. 
for everyone tonight. I think it's um, quite a good comfort food. Um, hopefully, Gracie might have a little bit and um, get some veggies into him. I've got two gadgets that I wanna show you. First one isn't the most glamorous of gadgets, but it's really good for anyone who's prone to muscular pain. I get quite a lot of aches and pains from CrossFit, and I also have a, a lower back pain um, from being quite tall, and this is the best pain relief that I've found for that. I've been to chiropractors, I've had medication for it. Nothing com compares to this. It's called a TENS machine. You get them off Amazon for about 20 quid. Uh, it looks a little bit like that. It's a really cheap one. It has these pads on it. Uh, you stick the pads to the, the, mu the, the part of you that aches, aches or hurts, and it kind of gives you these like little muscle, muscle spasms. It's a bit weird at first, but once you get used to it, it's fine. You just leave it there for about 20 minutes and then uh, take it off and for me, the pain's gone. Second gadget's a little bit cooler. Check this out. Alexa, where's my keys? Try under the couch. Oh, you bitch. Hey Siri, where's my keys? What happened there is I just asked Siri to find my keys and she buzzed this little Bluetooth thing that attaches to my, my key ring. Um, it's called a tile. About, again, about 20 quid, I think they cost. Really handy if you're prone to losing stuff. So you can attach them to stuff like your kids or your backpack or your dog or your car, whatever you're prone to losing. You just basically attach this little tile to it and then uh, you can buzz it and hear where it's at. So they're my two gadgets of the week, the TENS machine and the tile. Slowly but surely going insane. Just gonna do a little photo downstairs. I've made a little set. Um, it's for a company that I'm working with over on my channel and my Instagram. Um, so I'm just gonna get a quick snap for that. It should be fairly straightforward, I think, because I've already kind of lined everything up and got the exact shot that I want. I just need to go sit in it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna do that. A computer is an educational device. It is, it is in fact a direct reflection of your, your own imagination, your own intelligence. And once you are given the freedom in which to create things and to see the, re the immediate response on the screen, then, uh, then, you become, then it becomes a very enjoyable experience. Uh, you go on to, to involve yourself in many other things. Can machines really think? Even the scientists argue that one. I'm convinced that machines can and will think. Seems to be a very, uh, a very fantastic and uh, hypnotic field. Uh, once you start, you just can't stop. It, it's, it's something you can't explain. I don't think for a very long time we're going to have a difficult problem distinguishing a man from a robot. And I don't think my daughter will ever marry a computer. Many levels of technology have, have stratified our society. Uh, I see computers, especially microcomputers, as uh, creating a whole different manner of technology. But I think the computers will be doing the things that men do when we say they're thinking. I'm convinced that machines can and will think in our lifetime. Uh, those that will deal with the computer will be far and away ahead of those that do not. Computers are designed to eliminate tedium in our lives. If, uh, if a computer does not do that, the probability is that you, you really didn't need a computer to begin with. You probably needed more arms and legs. I confidently expect that within a matter of 10 or 15 years, something will emerge from the laboratory which is not too far from the robot of science fiction fame. The case is that we are humans and we are much more adaptable to, to our environment than the computer is to its own. We should be the ones that adapt.